Okay, so today we have a really busy weekend. I have a ton of wax carving that I need to do for my upcoming collection, but also it's a really exciting weekend. And I honestly debated on sharing this with you or not because I never want to feel like I'm bragging or like, you know, sometimes sharing like successes or exciting moments can feel kind of icky but i know that you guys are so genuine and the excitement that you guys share for my like small wins i know that it's real and i try and be as open as i can with you guys even when i'm having really hard times with my business or with my motivation i share those things with you guys so i want to share the good stuff with you too one of my viewers did one of the most kind things that I think anyone's ever done for me. I hope she doesn't mind me telling her name. Her name is Gabby and she reached out to Pepe Tools and told them about my videos and they messaged me and they sent me some really amazing tools, some things I've been eyeballing for a while and I am just so excited to share them with you. They are things that I genuinely wanted to buy for myself that I would have bought for myself, but Instead, they sent them to me. So I do want to share some of those things with you guys this weekend. I don't know if I'll be casting. So one of them we might have to take a look at together later, but a few of the things I am going to be using this weekend. And so I'm going to open that box over there and show you guys some of the things that they sent me. And then we're going to start wax carving. But another thing that we're going to do this weekend is we are going to be making Gabby a necklace. And I think it's going to be one of the necklaces that's already on my website. So we're going to wax inject one of the molds because I didn't get to show you guys that whenever I first used my wax injector. So we're going to make her a necklace and we'll probably be casting it in the following video whenever I cast all of these new pieces I'm going to be making this weekend. And yeah, I just could not believe that she did that and I want to do something for her in return just to say thank you. Obviously having a YouTube channel is a part of rounding out my jewelry business. I mean, I love doing YouTube and it doesn't feel like a lot of work to me. It does take a lot of time, but it is a part of my income every month. And so reaching out to brands is another part of having YouTube be a good chunk of my income for my jewelry business. And I am not the type to reach out to people or to businesses or to brands. That stuff makes me so uncomfortable. And I know it shouldn't because we are sharing good things here. And anyway, point is I probably would have never done that myself, or at least I would have waited until I thought I was big enough to be worthy, I guess. And so I just can't say thank you enough for someone wanting to do that for me. And I think it's also a good reminder that people are gonna see things in you that you won't be able to see in yourself. And so I think for me, it's just a reminder to like have more confidence in myself and what I'm capable of and what I put out there. So I'm gonna try and not be nervous to advocate for myself in the future and I'm just blown away. So thank you, Gabby. This weekend is for you. So we're not gonna be using everything that's in here. Pretty heavy. We have these little finger gloves. These are gonna be really nice for protecting my fingers when I'm sanding or polishing. You guys know if you're jewelry makers that it's hard to keep nail polish on or have your nails done because they just get scuffed up by sanding wheels, polishing wheels, and these are gonna be so helpful. Right now I've been using these leather fingertips and they're great, but they're just so bulky. And so it can be hard to hold really small pieces and sand and polish them. These are gonna be really nice. So they also sent some pickle solution. I've been using salt and vinegar as my pickle solution this entire time since I very first got started. So I'm really, really interested to see how big of a difference this makes in pickling my jewelry. They also sent me a Bench Basic blowtorch. I've never used this kind. I've only ever used a torch from, I think it was B&M when I lived in England. And then the one I use now is Durston. I've never heard of Smart Flux before. Or it says prevents fire scale, fluoride free, fire coat protection. I've always used a borax cone for my flux. 
Oh. I really, really genuinely can't believe that this happened. They sent me a bunch of silver solder paste. If you've seen my video, Soldering for Beginners, I talk a lot about how solder paste is way easier to use starting off learning how to solder than using chips. I do still use soldering chips. I've only ever bought the easy solder paste, so the one that melts at a lower temperature, but they sent solder paste that are all levels, so hard, easy, medium, and this really nice little tray that holds your solder paste. This is... Pepe Lube for effortless cutting, drawing, shearing, drilling, grinding, tapping, piercing, and more. So is this wax? What is? Okay, that's really nice. I've seen, um, I'll have to grab her name and put it on the screen, but I've seen this girl use this blade butter and she makes really cool videos. But in a lot of her videos, when she starts to make her jewelry, she uses this blade butter and puts it on her blade. And I, I just adore her videos. I think they're awesome. This feels like Christmas. Oh, holy crap. This stuff is so smooth. I've only ever used the beeswax. I don't even know where I got the beeswax. I think I got it off of Amazon for putting it on the blades of my saw blade before I saw. And I break blades very frequently, so I'm curious to know if it's because I don't have something like this. This is really like oily and greasy in a good way, and that beeswax isn't. Whenever I put it on my saw frame, it just kind of cuts it off the block so I've always been curious if it's really been doing anything for my blade this is one of the things I was most excited about this is the lion punch forge I've seen very few things about this online but as you guys know I've been getting more into graving and uh, grain setting and I want to learn more how to engrave in my pieces and I really really wanted a GRS the air pneumatic graver but I honestly cannot afford that right now so this is gonna be a good middle ground the line punch forge attaches to the hammer hand piece on the Fordham. So I think this retails for $64. And the pneumatic piece on the hammer hand piece is what pushes this graver to help you with cutting into the metal. So I'm really interested to see how this helps me because I have a tendency to slip whenever I'm pushing the metal. And I feel like this is going to be really helpful. I also sent over a ton of saw blades, which is so nice. I feel like I'll never run out. Out now these are nano nano blades from Pepe tools and they're in a bunch of little cases for different size and different thickness blades they also sent over an apron which is really nice and gonna be really helpful I have an apron for when I cast but I don't have an apron for when I'm soldering or um, polishing and honestly I should be wearing an apron to protect my clothes whenever I'm soldering and I do wipe my hands on my pants whenever I am polishing my jewelry so this is gonna be really nice to have an apron to wear. Very cool. Okay, so this one's really exciting because I've been using my wax pen since I started wax carving. The one I'm currently using is from Arby and I really do like that wax pen. At first I had some trouble with it. I don't know if you guys remember from one of my earlier videos about some wax carving tools. I was having trouble with the tip of the pen engaging with like the heating mechanism and so I was having to like hold it and it was cramping my hand. Anyway, that ended up being my fault because I didn't have the tip installed like I was supposed to. So anyway, the pen's been great. It works really well, but I don't have any tips to replace it with. So I only have the one that's kind of fat and wide and it does a good job, but having multiple tips on the end of your pen is going to allow you to make different textures and to get into different spots of your piece. So that's where this wax pen comes in. It's called the Touch, touch o matic Wax Worker with four tips. It's so cute. Immediate heat response, continuous mode switch, lighted precision, temperature your control indicator the unit switches on and off la 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 right <laughs> who am i struggling with this it's so little and cute i feel like it needs a name it's so narrow which is going to be so nice for fitting on my wax bench and not taking up too much space the rb one is a little bit wide and bulky but it honestly isn't a huge deal but this will be nice if you are like killing for space on your desk oh my god it's so cute you guys i feel like it needs a name look at how cute she is it even looks like a face you know little mouth i'm gonna find a name for it. This feels like a dream. These are the tips and they are tiny. 
They're so tiny. <laughs> they look like little like relays, you know, the things in your car. Are they called relays? What are they called? A fuse. They look like little fuses. Go straight out and push straight into change tips. Okay, so this next one I am also really excited about. I probably won't be using it this weekend, but I will be using it once I cast all my pieces and I'm setting the stones. But I have right now the Encore vise, the one that attaches to my bench peg and you can spin it around and it's on a little post. But I don't have a ball vise. I'll be able to set smaller pieces of jewelry, some soldering block. I've never tried honeycomb soldering blocks. I've only ever used these soldering blocks and I don't know what they are. I have them listed on my Amazon storefront and I will just put the name right here, but I've only ever used these and these are fine. I just don't know any different. So I never tried anything else. And so these will be fun to try out and see how how much easier it is or what the difference is soldering on a honeycomb board. It's really interesting looking and you can kind of see through it. This one is a circle one, which I wonder if I can use this on my great stand. Okay, hang on. I have a great stand that is really old and I love it. It has a little soldering grate on top, but it bows. And let me show you what this looks like. Okay, so this soldering grate, you can see it's got a, I don't even know what this is. I like using this because it allows you to heat from the bottom of your piece and then bring your flame around and heat from the top. So, I think I could replace this old grate with this honeycomb soldering board because it does have those air holes and I could heat from the bottom. I can keep it right here as long as I don't knock it off and break it. <laughs> yeah, I really do like my grate stand and heating from the bottom. So this is gonna be a really nice alternative to my wobbly old metal grate. Okay, so I'm thinking that this is, ooh, this is the find the middle tool so that you can always find the center of your piece. This is gonna be really helpful whenever you're soldering bezel cups onto your ring shank or I mean, any time that you're needing to find the center of your piece when you're wax carving and you need to find where to set your center stone. It's just a nifty little tool with a bunch of grid marks on it to help you find the center. So I like to keep all these little tools here on my bottom tray and I'm gonna add that to it. So the last thing is, so here's an even smaller honeycomb soldering board. I do have some empty drawers that I can keep my extra soldering boards. I'm done opening everything. Again, thank you so much, Gabby, and thank you, Pepe Tools, for sending me all of that stuff. I can't wait to use it and talk about it. The one thing that we are gonna use today is this wax pen. Like I said, I have a bunch of pieces to make for my coming up collection, and I do wanna see how well this wax pen works. Okay, so the way it's set up right now is when you're holding it, this little light comes on, and it starts to warm up just because you're holding it, and then if you put it down, it turns off, and that means it stops warming up. That's really nice because you're not always going to need this to be warm all the time. Sometimes you need to set it down, cut some wax off, and then pick it back up and start again. That way you don't have to cut your whole thing off. But if you do want it to stay warm the entire time, you just push the sensor button and then it just stays glowing and you know it's going to stay warm. And then you just turn up the temperature and the little light gauge goes up and you know that it's getting warmer. That is very neat. Changing out these tips seems pretty simple. You just pull it straight out and then you pop your next one in. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Isn't it cool? So what's it for? To melt the wax. I use this just oh. like this one, but look at how like chunky. This one's kind of chunky and it only has one little tip. Mm. But this one is cute and it's skinnier and it has a bunch of different tips that I can use. I can take this tip and out. And it takes up less room. Skinnier takes yep. up less room. Yep, takes up less room. And it lights up. Yep, lights up. And it has like a sensor. Like It's really cool, Mom. Yeah, I like it a lot. How much did it cost? I think that's a few hundred dollars. That's fine. Mm -hmm. fun with your new stuff. Thank you, baby. I love you. I love you too. Bye. Bye. Have fun playing your video games.
Okay, so it's Sunday and I have my flask in the kiln burning out and that should be done around 8.30 I think before I pour the gold and it is a cast in place ring so I won't be able to quench it so I'm hoping that I can show you guys some of the footage and just film like really late at night of me finishing up that ring. I did just film my first ever live over on Instagram. You guys know that I have a full-time job and that my dream is to obviously do jewelry full-time, run my business full-time, cast for others one day. There's just so many things that like working a full-time job just does not help my business in any way. So I've been trying to add new ways of making money so that I can get out of my nine to five. And one of those ways is Instagram subscriptions. Last week I started an Instagram Instagram subscription service, $9.99 a month, and it's for anyone who's wanting to learn how to make a jewelry. I share a lot over here on YouTube, and I teach here on YouTube, but not everyone watches long-form content. Some people just need bite-sized amounts of information, and so in order to accommodate that, I started the subscription service. Also, particularly on YouTube, I've been getting a ton of messages from people wanting to get advice or tips on carving or casting or you know anything and it takes a lot of time to answer all of those questions and a lot of people have the same questions and so I realized that not everyone's watching my YouTube videos from Instagram and I don't like leaving people unread so it's so helpful to get paid for my time on Instagram like with YouTube I do get paid for my time from ad money and super thanks so far the only one who's used it is my mom and that's totally fine thanks mom I love you but it is really nice to have a way to finally be compensated for my time and my knowledge on Instagram and so I did my first live I'm gonna be doing one live a month on Instagram answering anyone's questions that they have it's a 30 minute live this one was 40 minutes I don't mind giving extra time if I can but I was just answering everyone's questions that they had about wax carving and casting and everyone is just so sweet and and in that learning like beginning stage so it's really exciting to share information with people so with that subscription I do the one live a month I do two voiceover reels a week and then at least one static image and then obviously I do the stories like well, for the weekend whenever I'm doing things I'll post stories that are only for subscribers and yeah it's just a really nice little community that we're building over there so if anyone's interested in like short form content but you still get really good tips and we can have a live Q&A once a month together. Go over there and subscribe. I do have more pieces that I need to make today, but first I need to get dinner started. I love making jewelry and I'm decent at it, but one thing I'm also decent at is making some really killer tacos. So I'm gonna go get those tacos started. I make a pork butt, you know, a pork butt in the crock pot. You sear it on all sides with some adobo seasoning and then you put it in your crock pot with four oranges, the juice of four oranges and some jalapenos and onions and garlic and you just cook that on high for four hours or low for six and it is so good. Once it's done, you shred it up and this is key. You sear it in a cast iron, the shredded meat, and then transfer it over to a Tupperware and then you use all your normal fixins. You're just raw onions, cilantro and lime and some Mexican cheese and it's the best tacos of life. So I do have work I need to do but I need to go start dinner first to get it all in the crock pot and then I'm gonna come back and we are going to wax inject the necklace for Gabby. Once we wax inject the necklace for Gabby. I'm probably going to start one more piece and then we will wrap it all up with casting this ring. I'm so excited to cast this ring. I can't wait to see how it turns out. I've never cast stones in place in gold yet, so I'm really excited to see how that looks. But before I go start these tacos, I want to talk about this wax pen from Pepe Tools. It's so good, guys. I used it all day yesterday and I absolutely loved it. It was something that I genuinely never knew that I needed and they sent it to me and thank you so much for sending me this wax pen. I used the wax pen all day yesterday and it was so, so convenient. I love the RB pen that I've been using from the very beginning, but it only has the one tip. I can't interchange the tip and the tip on my RB is kind of big, so it makes it hard to get into places, but my favorite
favorite thing about this wax pen from Pepe Tools is the sensor in the handle. Whenever you're wax carving, you're constantly, you know, heating up your piece and then setting it down, carving away wax, heating up your piece, melting more wax on, setting it down, carving, and it's just like that repeat motion. And whenever you're casting stones in place and you're burying, you know, your stones in the wax, you're doing that even more. And with my RB, so that it didn't sit there and smoke and burn wax, I would have to turn it off, turn it back on, turn it off, turn it back on. The sensor on this pen is so sensitive and works so well. When you hold it in your hand, it starts to heat up, but when you set it down, it turns off immediately. It also heats up way faster than the other pen that I used to use. Within seconds, the tip of the pen is smoking. Like it, it can get really, really hot. And yeah, it's just insanely convenient to just not have to turn off the entire unit every single time you set it down. I also really like how malleable the wire is on the pen and it's really really light with the other one that I used to use it's got your traditional like extension cord style cord like let me let me show you so with this RB pen the cord is already like a little bit shorter but it gets like really tangled and tight like your typical cords like look at how how wound that is and just it's not as flexible and it's short but this wax pen is almost like an air hose like it's squishy it's tiny it's super flexible this one is just really really stiff like look how stiff that is this one's super malleable super light really really long which is really helpful because i often go from this bench to my other workbench and this i can just pick it up and scoot it to the end of the table and i can reach which i really really like i love the rb and i'm gonna keep it as a backup but this is gonna be my main wax pen. I'm hoping to have a link for you by the time this video goes up. I just filmed myself injecting this piece for Gabby, so we'll just have to do that in the next studio vlog or make it its own dedicated video, but I'm just gonna clean up this injection. This is how the injection came out, and I'm just gonna clean it up a little bit. There's a little bit of flashing, so whenever I'm injecting the wax, some of the wax pushes out from the mold and I think that's either my wax is too hot maybe I didn't put enough vent holes and it's just like exploding out of the sides it's not bad it's just happening right here around the bale so it's a quick touch up if anyone really really knows what causes flashing please let me know but I think it's a lack of ventilation in my actual mold and maybe having the pressure up a little too high so I don't know I didn't have much time to play with it whenever I was doing it so I'm just gonna touch this piece up and go edit some videos for the week for reels and for my tips videos for the Instagram subscribers because the kiln is going to be done in about two hours and then I will cast that flask and then at the same time dinner is going to be done so it'll give that flask time to cool while I finish up dinner we eat dinner and then I'm gonna come back down here I don't care how late it is because I want to break open that flask and see how that pour goes and I'm probably also gonna finish that ring because I want to wear it tomorrow so I'm gonna clean this up and then I will see you guys whenever it's time to cast mm -hmm. 